Hi you guys, welcome back to another First Impression Friday video where I review all the patterns of a single collection, whether that's an indie designer's entire collection or a big four seasonal collection. Uh, today we're gonna be reviewing Shut Charlotte. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If you can tell, this is a French speaking. <laughs> I don't know if they are actually in France or not, but um, they're French pattern designers. Um, they do have all of their patterns translated in English as well as some of the listings. So we're going to be taking a look at those today. Uh, before we get into it though, I do want to um, introduce myself to all of you who are new here. Uh, my name is Lindsay. I sew all my own clothes and I post videos all about garment sewing. Uh, leave a comment with uh, and introduce yourself so I can give you a formal welcome. And for everyone else, please give this video a like so that YouTube will know that it's awesome and show it to more people. And of course, if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and click that subscribe button and click the bell if you want to receive notifications. All right, so this is the collection from Shut Charlotte. And I think that Shut means like be quiet right like shh like whatever that sound is um that's what i was able to discover based on my very very limited uh research <laughs> um so that's a cute name i guess i'm not as sure how it relates to sewing but it doesn't have to um all of their other stuff other than whatever's in this english tab here is all in french so I cannot read much about them. If you speak French or translate French and you want to let me know what's going on, um, maybe there's some information about their name, leave that in the comments section. We would all find that super, super helpful. Okay, so this is the illusion pattern, um, almost seven pounds or euros, my bad. Um, and they are on sale. So they're normally nine, almost nine euros. And looks like they have a little... 20% off sale. It says the illusion pattern is for a top that looks like a shirt, but isn't one. It is also a classy looking sweatshirt. This versatile pattern with many possibilities is surprising and more importantly fun. So this looks like it's going to be one of those things where it's kind of roughly translated. So we're going to have to do our best um, to kind of figure out what they're saying. I don't know what they mean by a top that doesn't look like a shirt or that looks like a shirt, but isn't a shirt. Um, but there are three collars. Um, there's the illusion collar band, a pussy bow collar, no collar with decorative braiding, five sleeve options for different lengths, and then also a butterfly sleeve option, and then two neckline depths. So modest or low cut, which is nice. I hear a lot of you, um, saying that you like a more modest neckline. So it's great that you have the option here. You don't see that very often um, in patterns. You'll be able to create tops with ease. Everyone, even novice sewers can follow this pattern. Easy, successful, and truly satisfying the way we like our sewing projects. All right, so UK sizes, six to 28. Uh, European sizes, 34 to 56. They have a four format, so you can print at home. They also have copy shop um, formatting and then a U.S. letter format as well. Um, two out of four difficulty, not even afraid. And there is an instruction booklet. This is them on social media. Um, happy sewing. I don't know what MB stands for, but our, our company is based in maybe like a PS, uh, based in Asia. Oh, okay, so there's just like a little bit of a note there about um, payment. Okay, cool. Let's go first, since this is the first pattern we're looking at, and look at the, um, well, I thought this was going to be the body measurement chart, but it is not. Do they have that here somewhere? I don't know. Okay, I'm not seeing it in English anywhere. Um, so we're going to have to just go off the, the finished garment measurement chart and it's all in centimeters too. Oh, I know I'm so spoiled being a U.S. sewist and having everyone accommodate us <laughs> with our inches. Um, let me, oh, I wish there was a body measurement chart. 
All right, let me take a minute and convert all of this and then I'll be back. Okay, so it looks like the bust um, of this is roughly 35 inches up to almost 52. Finished. So that is, a well, I guess I would say it's a little more inclusive than I thought originally. Not the most inclusive, um, but there, I think if you run like US 16, 18, this would still work for you. Again, I'm not looking at the body measurement chart. This is the finished measurement chart. So we have to factor in ease and all of that kind of stuff. The hip looks like it's running 36 inches up to like 53 and a half. Um, so I am like a 16, 18 and ready to wear US and that would get, yeah. And my hip is like 49 inches. So that would give me like four inches of ease um, in this pattern. So hopefully that helps with sizing. Um, okay, so back to the design of the top. This is also one of those sites where the pictures don't get any bigger and there's no like zoom. So we have to go down and then back up and down and back up. It's annoying, I'm sorry. Okay, so this version that we're looking at here, I think is the illusion collar band where it's kind of like your seam allowances are turned to the right side which is cute and interesting oh but they use like a sheer okay all right so this first version we're looking at and if we go back to the line drawings actually um you can see that there is like a contrast fabric and then you it's like you leave the raw edges of whatever this contrast is, I think raw, and it's maybe supposed to be sheer, and the um, it's like reverse seam allowances. And then here's the pussy bow version, and then there's also one without a collar too. So we're gonna take a look at all of those, hopefully. Um, so this is like the sheer illusion. It's really pretty, right? It's very like, I don't know, sweet delicate um interesting for a woven top certainly not something we see very often so that's a good sign i don't know if this little pucker here is intended or not um not indicated on those line drawings but there is maybe possibly a little pleat here beautiful fit in the shoulder sleeve cap looks reasonable um it is these drag lines here are pointing to her shoulder so maybe some indication there that it is a little bit small through the actual cap itself so that would be something to check for and then I don't think that there are bust starts um, and it kind of looks like there might be some drag lines pointing to her bust as well which would also indicate that bust starts would be helpful here okay then we have this version same version okay same version um, and you can tell this one's kind of like pulling open. See all these horizontal drag lines here? Again, that could be coming from the bust. I don't think it's because she's got her hand in her pocket. Um, it might just be, again, this sleeve cap causing that issue. If this is too tight here, then it's pulling it to try and give her more room here. So yeah, that would definitely be something I would be looking out for. This one is the butterfly sleeve, and you can see no issues with any drag lines at all. So that pretty much confirms that the sleeve cap on the sleeve is a little bit too small for her, not to say that that's gonna happen to you, um, but definitely something to check. I love the contrast pussy blow bow here. That's really, really beautiful, this little nautical, stripe so sweet here is another version um is this a dress yes so that's really cute and the fabrication on this one must be a little bit different too it does seem like it has a little more drape too i mean there still are drag lines so um with that sleeve there but the dress i love the length of the dress hello showing some leg and then another butterfly sleeve option with the, what are they calling that? Illusion collar band. <clears throat> I 
that's cool with like the sequin or you know whatever that is maybe like sequin mesh I guess and then here she is again with another version lots of different um samples here which is really nice lots of pretty pretty ideas look how cool this one is they might have stitched this one down I mean that looks expensive am I right um, here's another one from the side. And again, I'm sorry for the back and forth scrolling, but kind of what we have to do here. Um, here's, I think, maybe some tester versions now. Yeah, even on her, it's still got drag lines. So that's two different body types, which is reason enough for me to think that something's going on with the sleeve. And you can kind of see it here. See how it's so flat here and then kind of comes out? Um, this is the back? Yeah, so it actually is like a collar um, where it folds over in the back and then the folds come down into the front, um, which I think we have a photo of here. Oh, she made hers extra wide. <clears throat> and also maybe added some buttons. Is that what that is? Cute. And then we have this version. Also fun. A little hard with the pose to tell anything about fit here, but... Does everybody's have a button? I didn't realize. I didn't think any of these had buttons. Here's another one. Super cute. High-waisted skirt. And then here is our last photo. So some of them do have buttons, which wasn't indicated in the line drawings. So that's a little interesting. Um, this is ready to go the next level, three to four hours, as much time as it takes to watch Titanic again. <laughs> um, this is just, okay, this is just indicating <clears throat> the difficulty level. And also, doesn't it look like that's a bust dart there? But when you come here, there's definitely no bust darts. Okay, so a little bit confusing um, in that regard. But I think the overall gist of this first one is that it's a unique, fun little design that we don't see very often. You might have to check some fit issues, but to be expected with any pattern to a degree, we'll, we'll check out some more of these sleeved patterns and see if that seems to be a common theme with them. All right, so this is called the rainbow dress pattern. Again, something... We never see um, our rainbow pattern is a mini or midi dress with or without a lot of go days. Now, I love a go day. I really do. They're going to do a lot of these in contrast fabric, which I don't love. But go days in all one fabric produce such a beautiful swingy dress. We'll look at these pictures and you'll see. Again, I'm not necessarily going to love the contrast fabric, but the idea of a go day dress, I am totally here for. Uh, we've got two links, three options for the neckline, rounded V or Claudine collar, which I think is like a Peter Pan collar. Uh, three sleeve options, cap sleeves, cup sleeves, or sleeveless. What's a cup sleeve? I thought a cup sleeve and a cap sleeve might be the same, but maybe not. Um, okay, so here it is. Here are the line drawings. We have, oh, okay, so cap sleeve. This is a, nope, that's not true. This is a cap sleeve. This is sleeveless, so this is the cup sleeve? Yeah, I don't know. Never heard of a cup sleeve. And then v-neck, rounded, but they're not showing the Claudine collar in the line drawings either. <laughs> okay, so some tester makes. All right, so here's the Claudine collar. Um, yes, very much like Peter Pan. Um, you can see that this is like princess seamed, center front seam, and then all of those open up into the go days. 
Um, still an issue here at the bus line, though, which should have been remedied with the princess seams. But again, if it's starting at the sleeve cap, maybe it has nothing to do with the princess seams. But there is one version. Here's another. Again, with the contrast fabric. The contrast is fun for, like... Like, I would wear this one on, like, a cruise or, like, a special occasion, you know, resort wear. I think for every day, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, oh, is this the cup sleeve? Wow, there's a go day in the sleeve, guys. Like, that is, <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot of go days. But this one, it looks like she left them out of the dress itself. Yeah, the go day sleeve. That is so interesting. Okay. And again, the length of it. This is what they're calling mini. And then the midi version. I don't think we've seen that yet. But here's a little tester make. Sleeveless version. Yeah, another set of drag lines. I don't know what is up with that. Here it is from the back. Super cute. I love the denim. Okay, so here's one where it's all one fabric, and you can get a much better idea of kind of how this feels, even with the go day sleeve, how it feels a little more like wearable every day and a little less like special, maybe. Um, but I mean, it produces such a beautiful shape where it's fitted through the bodice and then just flares like crazy from the I guess like an empire seam it's not a seam but like an like this under bust down this person made the godet sleeve but some kind of plain bodice which I didn't see in the line drawings right like here are the line drawings there's the one that just has the simple one godet But I'm not seeing any that are like no go days, which is interesting. Plus, I don't know what all of this is here. I mean, granted, this is a more structured fabric. Obviously, this is like a true denim, but is this happening because of the belt? I don't know. Here's one with like jacquard. Is that what this is? Yes, these are the same. So this is a close-up of that one. So you can see the fabric is just a lot more structured. Here's a little cutie one. Again, no go days in this body at all. So that is an option. And then here's like your little difficulty level and how much time it takes to sew it. And our finished measurement chart again so obviously like all you really need to pay attention to here is your bust yeah she didn't even include the waist or the hem uh or the hip which makes sense um shoulder tip to shoulder tip so that's like across your back and then the length of the sleeves and then the lengths of the dresses yeah so she didn't well does that mean that this is the midi that can't be right. Yeah, double check those lengths too. They weren't super obvious. Okay, now we've got Dancing Queen. Dancing Queen pattern, a little dress for the holidays that is a wardrobe essential. None of this is scrolling. Okay, so here are our line drawings. We don't get a lot of um, description on this one, but it looks like a kind of fit and flare maybe with elastic waist and then some kind of overlay and then sleeved sleeveless uh, butterfly sleeve and what other differences do we see is that it oh super fun it's like got a little like cowl in the back yes it does so this is like a charmeuse and maybe like some kind of sequin. 
Here it is with a sheer overlay. It looks to be like a little slit in the sleeve too, maybe. But they all have that cowl in the back. I cannot make heads or tails of what's happening at the waist. Oh, here it is as a top. And again with the drag lines. Hmm. The top is really pretty. I love this like sanded silk or whatever it is that she made that version out of. Okay, here's another one with the overlay. Yeah, it's just really hard to tell what is happening. underneath the overlay <clears throat> they also made some really cute like daytime versions well I mean I say daytime I just mean like not special occasion um really cute for a date night even if it's not the holidays or something glitzy glamoury like this one obviously is lots of fun colors lots of different fabrics you can see I think it's really cool Yeah, she wore her backward, hers backwards too. Okay, great. Now this one is still a level two. Doesn't that look like elastic in the waist? We're just going to go with that. <laughs> um, three to four hours, also a level two. And then there might be some kind of like princess seaming in the skirt. It's just really hard to tell. And obviously their line drawings are not like the most... It, like spot on accurate in terms of what the actual design is all right now we've got the I love you pattern you'll like this easy to sew pattern the ruffled collar and graceful back neckline no special bra needed gives such a feminine look two-in-one pattern dress and top versions included three sleeve lengths Short, three-quarter inch straight, and three-quarter inch flared. So, simple shift dress style with a ruffled collar. This one does not feel uh, super unique, uh, but it is cute. You know, I love a ruffle. This bias binding trim is certainly an interesting choice for finishing. Obviously, you know, she tied it in to the hems as well. Is it like that on every one? Yes, it is like that on every one. So this is more of like a quilted knit of some kind. So the collar stands away a lot more. This one maybe is like bias with piping. Now obviously you should be able to sew this collar on right sides to get wrong sides together turn it to the outside and then like top stitch it down so the bias binding is definitely a choice I'm assuming it's like a design feature I'm just not certain that I love all of this happening the contrast trim plus the collar it's kind of a lot I do love the scoopy back do you know what I mean? Like, it's just a lot. And this with the um, lettuce edge makes it feel a little bit circusy, clowny, maybe. So she did hers all in one, no contrast. That's certainly much more approachable, ready to wear looking. But you don't have to do it that way. So again, I'm assuming that is the designer's choice. Look at this. That is a lot more collar and a cute little sleeve too, which we didn't hear about those as options. Much bigger collar. That almost looks better, like more intentional. But you know me, I love a big collar. So a lot of cute versions. The Scoopy back is really, really pretty. And this is a big collar with a tie. So I don't know if all of these options are included in the pattern or I don't really know how that works, but 
I guess people have creative liberty with, uh, I mean, are there going to be instructions for how to do that tie or no? Here's the dress version. Obviously really fitted in the bust. She probably could have gone for a full bust adjustment, which is why you're getting those drag lines here. But I didn't see a lot of issues with the sleeves this time. Here's one on, I think this is the designer. Um, and there is a bust dart, so I think that helps, but the sleeve looks pretty good. Here's another one. Right, much wider through the bust, so you're getting less um, pulling in the bodice. All of this is happening, I think, because maybe, maybe there is the sleeve cap issue. I don't know. Are we seeing it on other people? Let me find something where someone's just kind of standing still. Here's one. Yeah, still happening. Something's happening at the very, very top of her sleeve caps. It's a really easy fix to adjust. Um, you just have to, you know, slash and spread the cap. And then when you go to gather it in, you know, the ease stitch that you do at the top of the sleeve, um, that'll give you the space that you need there. All right, this one is the Pretty Woman pattern. Love that movie. Discover our pretty woman pattern, jersey knit topper dress, comfortable and feminine, sure to please. Fitted in straight cut options. Five, col I'm sorry, three collar versions, five sleeve versions. <clears throat> so again, we're only showing a couple collars and a couple of sleeves here. I wish that these line drawings showed every option so that, I, I just love a line drawing. It's much easier for me to see than in the sample makes. Um, so... But this is really beautiful. Love that. Love that. I also wouldn't mind this being a bodysuit. Um, this is another sleeve that we didn't see. It ties here. Right? See that little tie? Super cute. Now we have a straight cut dress option with a contrast sleeve. Cute idea. Here's a straight on version of that. Here is the kind of straight across with the tie. The finishing here is interesting. They're just raw. There it is in the back. And this in the front. Now, mind you, this belt is separate. So she could have put it higher and tighter if she wanted. She chose to do like a low slung hip belt. Here is another version. I think that's that same kind of collars before straight across. Long sleeves. Here's another one. Same neckline. Three quarter sleeve. Then we have this version. Kind of like a bell sleeve. That's really pretty. I love this as like a date night situation. Again, belt is separate. So if you don't like where it is, you could either tie it another place or leave it off altogether. Love that option. That's really pretty. Now we've got this version. I guess we'll show this photo. I'm trying to show as much of the dress as possible. So she didn't say anything about there being different lengths or different skirts, but this one is lengthened and has a gathered kind of um, tier at the bottom. And then she kind of covered up a lot of the other stuff. So hard to tell what's happening there. Oh, here we go. So that same straight across um, neckline. She said there were three necklines, right? Yeah. I think so far we've only seen two. Wait, here we go. Here we go. No, that's the same one. Hmm. So there's the crossover. There's the straight across. This girl made it tie up somehow. Cute set though, right? But how did she do this? She just cut it up the middle? Oh, she she made a little tie and then she pulled, wrapped the tie through the neckline, through the hem, and then tied it up. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. 
All right, well, I only see two neckline options and then a whole bunch of variations on length and sleeve, which is super fun. She's calling it a level three, four to five hours, like a Sunday brunch. I don't know about your Sunday brunch. Mine don't last five hours, but um, maybe because it's knits? I don't know. I would love to try this one. I think that that neckline is really, really pretty. And we also have finished measurements finished measurements. We have two different charts. Finished measurements for the pretty woman dress and then finished measurements for the top. Interesting. Okay. And now we have the, oh, it's not translated. Oh, you guys, I feel like you always laugh at me. I try and speak French. Dom de Cour? No, oh, that's bad. Okay. Um, this is a pretty easy to wear wrap around blouse or dress that is also feminine and original. One of the two front panels is sewn into the side seam. You simply slip the blouse on over your head, then tie the other panel closed with a bow. So it is a faux wrap. Um, the hem of the left front panel is curved in addition to the bottom. Cuffed short sleeves with piping, three quarter length sleeves, and long sleeves. Okay, and you can see the line drawings here. We've also got like a yoke with a gather, um, optional piping in there. And then it, does this mean there's a hem band? Because I love a good hem band. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, really drapey. I was not expecting that. All right, so if you are at all concerned about your bust, this is not going to be the one for you um, because this could easily just, like, slip open. Now, the looser you tie it, you can see, the more closely it hangs to the body. She has it tied tighter here, which is creating more drape and ease on these uh, diagonal lines here. Here's the top in a little bit more structured fabric. She loves this. Isn't that Liberty like fabric as a contrast? And then this one also has elastic in the sleeve. Here's the back. This is worrisome. I think that all of this is happening. It's definitely pulling through here, which is probably where in the front. Yeah, it's being pulled around her back to make this tie. So again, she's tying it tighter than it was drafted. So if you like a looser fitting wrap, I think this one would be okay. What happened here? Maybe she burned her fabric. Oh, no. It happens or melted it. Here's a black one, subtle with the gold piping. Cute little mini dress, though. But, yeah, you're definitely going to want to, I mean, even with this huge pleat, um, it's, it, it's not going to be one of those wrap dresses that accentuates your waist. Um, if you pull it too tight where it looks like that in the front, then, and she also had to pin this closed here, in the back, it's going to be doing all kinds of pulling. Let's see if we can see on a tester make. No, she did not provide any back views of the tester makes at all, and everyone's, like, really trying to, like, cinch it in. I don't know that that is what was meant to happen. Um, otherwise you wouldn't be getting just all of this pulling and pulling, um, through here all to the side where it's being tied. So just keep that in mind. If you want it to be loose, which is what this pleat would indicate is supposed to happen, that it's not supposed to be fitted. Um, you just cannot tie it as tight. Okay. Now we have a cute little jacket, Sermon 31 jacket. It is an easy to sew pattern for an attractive feminine jacket. No buttonholes or zippers. This jacket can be worn open for a casual look. 
well, it must be worn open, right? With no buttons or zippers. Perfect for everyday wear with jeans, for business attire at work, or in the evening over a dress. It works in all situations and meets all your needs. You can add piping on the front of the jacket to give it a dressier look. The sleeves are long, so you can turn them up at the cuff and show off your nice lining fabric winky face. Okay. Now, you guys know I love like a little peplumy, uh, uh, shoot, what's it called? Oh, flouncy um, situation. I also love a cropped jacket. Um, so this should be like right up my alley. We've got the piping here and the long sleeve, like she said, open. I think this is that ruffly top that we looked at a second ago. So this one is being turned. Okay. So they all are like that. They all are turned back along the facing and I, mm, hard to say, but I'm thinking what's happening and why it's kind of looking a little bit sloppy, should I say, is because the fabric is really lightweight and then this facing was not interfaced. Um, if you did an interfaced facing, um, it would look a little bit more like, it would like hold its shape a little bit better. Don't know what's happening here, but obviously she's turning over her shoulder, so that's hard to see. Now, this fabric is a little bit, there it is with the Liberty again. This fabric is obviously like some kind of like suiting, so this is holding its shape really well. There's the back again, looking over her shoulder, hard to see what's happening with these drag lines because of that pose. All right, so I'm thinking. I'm thinking that it's cute, but something about it is just, I think fabric choice is super important here. And then obviously like this version looks great. I love this version with this jacquard or whatever it is. Um, I just think that fabric choice, and if you do something too lightweight, is this velvet? If you do something too lightweight, then it can just look a little bit floppy and sad <laughs> um, but look at this brocade really pretty right and she even put like a hard press in hers because she was trying to get it to stay how she wanted it to stay partially opened now are we seeing anybody else's back view without looking over the shoulder already like just give me a back so hers is looking a lot better than the other woman's um, again, could be fabric choice, but this doesn't concern me too much. And the peplum, because she used it, used this quilted fabric is really kind of standing away from the body, almost like a skirt. Also, she's obviously petite. So this is running a little bit long on her. I think this is supposed to hit at her natural waist. Um, here it is in more of like a suiting. And then obviously really tight along the body or along the bicep, really close fitting um, sleeve. So yeah, I mean, I want to like it, but I'm thinking, you know what? I do like it in the right fabric, but not enough to where it's one of those things that I'm going to run out and have to have to have. Like sometimes with those little crop jackets and cute little like flounces. I'm like, gotta have this immediately. Um, that's not one of those. Okay, so here is Emilion. Emil, I'm trying to say how a French person would say, Emilion. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so a beautiful pair of high-waisted trousers, either slim or wide-legged. This pattern has lots of pretty details. Small scallop accents on the openings. I'm not sure what that means. Tied front belt, faux rear welt pocket you'll learn new sewing techniques how to sew a real zipper fly a faux back pocket etc thanks to the detailed explanations of the booklet you'll be able to fearlessly tackle this masterpiece okay so scalloped edges what was it scalloped accents on the openings you're gonna be looking out for that i guess that's what this means but is it just a trim or like what's the deal also slim legged slash pockets, belt carriers. There's also like a slash here. So what comes up to the high rat tie waist is not necessarily fitted. 
So sort of like a paper bag waist-ish. Um, we have front darts, back darts, just one set of each. All right, let's see how we did on this. So you see how this kind of like pulls away from the body a little bit? Um, also very tight through the thigh here, especially for the wide-legged version. Yeah, just a little bit, something a little bit happening with either the crotch curve or the, I think the, um, I think that the crotch depth is too small for her. She needs a little bit more room in the thigh. Um, let's see this pink version. Hand in the pocket. Hand in the pocket. <laughs> That's covering up most of the pants. Can't see that. Hands in pockets again. If you're new here and haven't seen one of these before where we review pants, I don't know what it is, but everybody who makes pants poses with their hands in the pockets. And it makes it impossible to see what is happening with the fit. But look at this crotch curve. That is a wedgie. Um, so there is not enough fabric. No. Right. Not enough fabric through the crotch curve there for her. Pants are hard, you guys. They are really tough. Um, not that you couldn't get this pants pattern. If you like the design, don't be deterred from these fit issues she's having on hers. Just know, like with any pants pattern, that you're going to have to make adjustments. And the fact that these may not fit you right off, like right out of the gate, um, just know that. Like you can see here, again, way, way, way too tight through the thigh. Um, this is supposed to be a, a pleat that opens up and then the pleat is supposed to just go smoothly down the leg like it is over here, but even whenever you kind of pop your hip, it shouldn't spread open this far. Let's see how they did on, yeah, so she made her super fitted, still have an issue with the crotch because all these drag lines are pointing right there, and the crotch length on her, because she's petite, is too long, so she would have needed to shorten the rise um, and then add something to her crotch depth in the front, I think. Ironically, this plus size version is the best one. I mean, granted, we do have a lot of extra fabric here, but it looks the best on her than anybody else I've seen. So, and I've been forgetting to look at what these scallop details mean, but I guess that means they don't show up well enough. But I think that you literally make scallops, uh, make like a little, like, scalloped piece of trim. You make your own trim. I guess. So again, you can just see every single person who's making this, their pleats are not laying flat. You have this kind of shelf here where the fabric is kind of pulling. And then you have this here where the fabric is pulling, like P-O-O-L-I-N-G, pulling. And then P-U-L-L, -L, pulling, um, because of this, what's happening at the crotch and the thigh here is creating all of this. If you let all this out, right, and give yourself a lot more room through the crotch depth, um, and maybe even the outer thigh and inner thigh as well, you'll see that these start to lay a lot flatter. I wanted to see some more backs. It looks like we're only going to get it back from her. That looks decent, right? That looks really good. She is popping a hip, so, you know, she's not standing perfectly straight. Although you don't really do that in real life anyways. And then this one looks pretty decent too. Nice long darts, which I like to see in a pant pattern. Um, but obviously these girls are very straight sized <laughs> um, and not very curvy. Um, so when you add the addition of hips and curves and things like that, that's when you start to run into the, that's when a lot of the issues start to become more prominent. But that back that we just looked at, here's how her front looks, right? So you can totally tell that like, there's a kangaroo pouch here. Like something's definitely happening. It's just too tight right through here. 
through about right here. So this whole area through here is just too small. Even though on the back side, it looks really good, right? So um, I think that that's just a matter of the front draft not being um, great. And the back looks decent though. So this is a level four, six to, day, six to eight hours. Yeah, that makes sense for a pant. So I would not um, recommend that pant pattern for a novice based on the difficulty, but also based on the fitting issues that you'll inevitably run into. Okay, so this is how I found out about this pattern. Do you remember a few weeks ago when I was saying that I couldn't find any bomber jackets that buttoned up? Someone sent me this version, and this is how I was actually able to find this pattern company to begin with. Um, they said that <laughs> of, of any pattern for buttons, ones with a ruffle sewn in had to be the one for me, right? And I, <laughs> I really had to give that a chuckle because it's true. If I'm looking for a pattern of any kind and it has a ruffle in it, the one I find has a ruffle in it, that's mine. I'm sold. Um... So this one, the line drawings are super, super cute. We'll get into some of the tester versions and discuss kind of execution of this design. But yes, this is very much a bomber jacket that buttons up, which is nice. Those of you that sent me suggestions for bomber jackets that button up, I forgot to mention that I was also looking for one that had a set in sleeve um, because I wanted to do like a contrast situation. Um, that was based off a ready wear, ready to wear version I saw years and years ago. I'm looking for a set in sleeve one with a button front. So if you see that, please let me know. <laughs> um, okay, so this says discover our bomber pattern for a new take on the bomber jacket, super feminine with pretty ruffles and two collar options. Regular or Peter Pan collar, zipper or snaps, with or without piping, ruffles in front and around the pockets, or without ruffles. Okay, so here is the bomber jacket in sort of a, what I'm assuming is like an athleisure-y type of nylon-y situation, and I obviously don't know how the ruffles are drafted. Like, is this a flounce? I think so because there's no gathers here, but because of that, anytime a flounce goes around a curve like your arm or over your bust, it is going to flare out. So I'm not loving the flare at the bust or whoop, these little wings that she's got going here. I actually think even though it's easier to design that a um, ruffle rather than a flounce, would have been better here because they would have just naturally hung flatter. Um, and then here it is with the Peter Pan collar. No ruffles, so you can see that there's just a seam here. So genuinely, you could put anything you want into this seam. You could do a flounce, you could do a ruffle, you could do fringe, you could do rhinestone trim, you could do piping, you could do whatever you wanted um, in this seam here. Also, the execution of the Peter Pan collar, not so sure about that either. It looks a little like maybe they don't, they're not true or something. They didn't really sew into each other, the collar and the jacket. Um, here's the back. See how the collar's pulling up and you can see the lining? Not a big fan of that. Here is another version. See what I mean? No matter what kind of fabric, the flounce is going to poke up and whatever. But it's easy, easy, easy to swap that out. Do not be discouraged. Here's one without any accents. Oh, but she did put the ruffle on the um, on the pocketing, which is really cute. And this denim, like distressed denim with all the holes is really, really fun. Here's one where she added piping, leather piping. She got a pretty neckline, pretty collar. This version is actually really, really well sewn. All right, here's a one with a print. So fun. Yep, I just swapped this out for a ruffle instead of a flounce, and you'll be good to go. Look how pretty. So fun. I love this. 
Here's one that's really nice out of like, I don't even know what this fabric is, but I'm in love with it. Is it like a quilted embroidered something or another? That's really nice. Oh yeah, see, see here's fringe. So fun. I'm actually going to, a, I think it's Kenny Chesney, some concert, some country concert where I want to do something like wild. Rhinestone trim, you hear me? <laughs> um, and then this one, she did the flounce again, as did this one. She did hers out of sweatshirting maybe? Yeah. So the lighter weight French terrier, whatever it is that she used, is obviously laying flatter. Um, but I think you could even achieve even more of a cleaner, simpler look with the ruffle if you just did gathers instead of the flounce. Okay, she's cute. I like the bomber. I really do. Okay, now we've got okay another pair of pants. So we have a chance to redeem ourselves from the last one. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, introducing Le Foot, a trouser pattern that flatters your figure and has a cool stylish look. It sits slightly low on the waist, yikes, and you can roll up the hems if you want. Le Foot includes a short version with two types of hems, wide cuff or little ties on the sides. Okay, so we have cigarette pant, or like I like to call it, pencil pant, because we do not support nicotine usage around here. And if it's good enough for a pencil skirt, then it's good enough for a pencil pant. <laughs> we have a little scooped um, pocket and then plates maybe, and then little darts on the back. Wide waistband that is also looks to be curved, but because it sits so low on the body, that is almost required. No hands in the pockets, does seem to be a little bit tight, and the pockets are poking out. Again, she's leaning over, fun picture, but, and then this has a bib sewn in, but if these are the pants that we are looking at, same issue with the thigh. These pleats, you should not really be able to see those. Too small right through her low hip. Okay, here's some shorts, hands in pockets. Hands in pockets make it hard to see if that this right here is because of her hands or because of the pattern. And we can confirm <laughs> it is because of the pattern. Um, again, too tight through here. It's actually causing the shorts to ride up and create a little um, pool of fabric here. And I just haven't done a low slung pant in so long. I'm not even sure what to think of this waistband. But as you can tell, similar issues as the last pant pattern. Even on this very straight sized woman, um, same issues. Every single place that you see. I almost wonder if you let out the the sewn up portion of the dart and had the or the pleat and had the pleat open up from here I bet that would fix almost everybody's issues yeah just a lot going on in the crotch it's it's tough I think some pattern designers make it look easy, right? Whenever all of their tester makes and all of the versions that they show on their website all look phenomenal. But I think when it comes right down to it, it's difficult to make a pants pattern that fits the masses. So this is Wonder Woman pattern. Discover the Wonder Woman pattern in its many versions, a top, a dress, with or without a cape. That's fun. Plunging or modest neckline. Wonder Woman is perfect for all occasions. Cute. Definitely seen this in ready to wear, right? I think I even got a top like this from maybe Goodwill uh, made out of like super, super lightweight uh, sweater knit. But I think this is the cape version maybe. And then this is just a regular collar and then something in the back ties up. So let's take a look. So 
woven, lightweight, showerly type stuff. Two layers. It's cute. Yeah, if you're a woman that likes to wear, like, just jeans, we also have a pretty bust dart here. So you can see a lot of these busts, I mean, granted, it's kind of riding up on her hip, which is not the pattern's fault. Um, it's relieving a lot of those uh, issues that we saw in the first few patterns. Just want to point that out. Um, but if you're someone that likes to wear jeans, this top would be really cute with jeans. But look at this dress version. You just throw on a sheer overlay. That's brilliant. And so cute and so easy to sew. This is not a difficult pattern, guys. Look, they've got a secret. And the secret is that this pattern is bang for your buck, both in terms of time um, and, like, it looks more difficult than it really is. Maybe they have more secrets than that. I don't know. But that's the secret that I think they're keeping. Here's another version with the sheer overlay. There are so many fun sheer uh, fabrics. If you go to Joanne and go to like the wedding section, you can find some really beautiful laces, sequins, embroidered fabrics, all of that. You can make something real, real cute. Here's the back. Remember how I said it looked like it was open? It is. There's like a little diamond opening, ties in the back. I, the, uh, the execution of this with the cape, there's kind of a lot going on. Um, I kind of wish maybe the cape, instead of hanging over and just flopping down in the back, was more sewn in to this here. I wonder if you could, like, hack it. Here's a super cute um, polka dot version with jeans, right? Isn't that a cute little, like, throw on with jeans top? Here's another version. These are all looking so, so good. Everybody's version looks great. Here's a pretty, uh, pretty picture of what the back could be. And another good photo of the back. So there, it is kind of like overlaid. So this is almost a little bit more like a yoke. I do feel like you could hack that cape and sew it into this and then have it just drape down your sleeve. Is that weird? Yeah, look at her. She tucked hers in. So cool. So 70s with her bell bottoms and her like brown leather accents. She did the little um, elasticated sleeve. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. These are all great. Everybody's version looks so good. I see nothing wrong with any of this. So cool. A little bit off the shoulder there, which I don't think is how it was designed. Maybe she made hers a size or two too big. Here's a big contrast sheer again, pulling out the red from the dragonflies. So pretty. I love this one. What's this? Oh, yardage requirements. I don't think we've seen that yet. So in this one, she actually has yardage requirements for contrast fabrics, but also um, if you want to use the same fabric. She's never, I don't think in any of her listings said, oh my God, I'm already in love, um, said anything about fabric suggestions, like what types of fabric she would recommend. Okay, so this is the Lady Kate pattern and just this little teaser with that back little bow detail, I'm in trouble. Looking for an elegant, easy to wear trench coat or coat with lots of pretty details lady kate is for you have fun with this pattern by choosing different fabrics details piping cover buttons etc okay so we have this okay so it's kind of like baby doll empire waist situation we've got a collar um with like a little curved situation to it six buttons uh so like double breasted maybe pleats here turned up cuff and then in the back we've got that little detail I was showing you and a hood optional hood to be determined so this is not like the most groundbreaking design detail it's not difficult to execute on absolutely any pattern you have but something about when pattern designers come up with these cute little details makes me just want to support them and say, hey, good job on this. Like, I know I could hack this on any jacket I have, but 
I want to support you and this one. Um, but basically what it is, is just like a rectangle of fabric sewn with piping and pulled together at the, um, at the middle. And then I think just like tacked on, but it is really cute. Here's the jacket from far away. All of the um, fit looks really pretty good on this. I do want to see a close up of what's happening here. Like that looks pretty good, right? I think there's a bust start there. Here she's again with her Liberty scraps. Girlfriend makes the most out of these Liberty scraps. Cute, cute, cute. Here she is with a mini me version, adorable. Yeah, it all looks pretty good up here. Even the buttons are like, this is still straight. It's not pulling open like it would if it were too small in the bust. So I love that. That version's hard to see. Kind of a lot going on with that fabric. Let's get this one. She added piping. And yeah, there is a hooded version. Love that. I mean, look how many people chose to make this little bow. So cute. But you can really see there how it's just, literally, it's just tacked on. It's like no big deal. Um, so cute. Another one. She left off her little middle piece. Here's how the lining comes together. Beautiful. Like really pretty, right? And then here's one with eyeballs on it. All right. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. This one looks really good. Um, she's giving it a four, maybe because of the lining. I'm not sure. Um, I'd give it a three <laughs> because I'm in a position to, um, to make those decisions around here. Okay. This is Osez Josephine. <laughs> two necklines, two sleeve links with or without ruffles. So this is going to be another one of those patterns where she really utilizes sheer fabrics. I don't know that I see another or can think of another pattern designer that utilizes different types of fabrics more so than this one. Um, I would never consider buying lace for this type of application um, or the overlays, the capes and all those things we've seen so far. Um, if it were not for her patterns. So kudos to that because these are really, really cute and sweet. Um, there is your deep plunging neckline. Super sheer. Down to her belly button, basically. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. But you can also, I mean, look how different, right? From that version to this one. Um, you can also sew it out of the, out of a non-sheer fabric. Put in a little ruffle. But the deep V, maybe like in an all black, maybe not as sheer as that red was, but the deep V definitely gives you a little something, something to talk about. I think this is a really fun, sweet top. Yeah, I love it. What did she say the options were other than the neckline with or without ruffles and two sleeve lengths? Is this, okay, so we have just like the three-quarter sleeve and then the long sleeve. Yeah, it looks really good. And I'm sure you could make this out of knits or lightweight wovens. Really cute. Okay, now we have the obsession pattern. Obsession is a feminine shirt with four collar options and two cuff options, regular Peter Pan, Victorian, or Mao collar, and ruffled or plain cuffs. Okay, this is interesting. Love this little detail. So cute. And then, of course, I love the little ruffled sleeve. So, I don't, is a Mao collar like a Mandarin collar? Is that the same? So she made it out of like a little lightweight shirting or maybe even like a Swiss dot. She's got another big secret to tell with her cute little sleeve cuff detail. The back fits beautifully on this one. Maybe a little tight around the hip, but all of this looks really good. 
Here is another one. I don't know what collar that is. Probably just hard to tell. Here's the Victorian collar. Let's see this from the front. Can we? Okay. I mean, a little hard to see because your hands are in the way, but... Hmm. Are we getting um, it, right? The The clown horror guy with the big Victorian like all the layers is we're we getting that are we getting like remember back in the 50s when you would um lay out in your front yard with the big um silver <laughs> like sun attractor thing is that what is that what vibe we're getting with this it's not as bad as we thought but it is definitely a statement right more secrets don't tell Oh, because it's shoot for shh. Be quiet. Okay, 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 okay. I get the secrets. I get the secrets now. It's all coming together. All right. Then we've got her. Love this little linen version. Beautiful photo of the uh, bust art. And this would obviously be the regular collar. There is a collar stand and a collar. So it is your traditional button down shirt with this is almost like pleated. It's not even ruffled, it's a pleated detail there which I love this one is regular it's not Peter it's not regular it's not Peter Pan is it Victorian or Mao I don't know the difference I think this is the Mao collar I think Mao collar must mean Mandarin and then she sewed the little gather into the Mandarin collar as well which is giving it this big stand So cute. Regular collar again. That must be, again, the Mao collar unbuttoned a little bit. So that's why it's kind of slouching down. Love the glove. Okay, yeah, cute. Pretty standard though, right? I mean, other than that one with like the crazy, crazy collar. The rest of this is pretty much the same. Again, kind of pulling through here though. I think that's all got to be bust. Maybe the busts are too small in addition to the sleeve cap. I don't know. All right. Now we've got oh, top, va, si, fronts. Is a Pattern for a pretty blouse featuring cute gathers at the yoke. Cute gathers at the yoke. I'm not seeing that. Make it with long sleeves or try the sleeveless version with a ruffled cap sleeve for summer. The finishing is impeccable as always. With no difficult steps, this pattern is ideal for novices who want to start sewing women's clothing. And even for experienced sewers who will enjoy the beautiful creation they'll be able to put together in no time. Cute. Looks like a little baby doll dress. But for adults, which I love. Yeah, love this version. You could find like cheap, cheap, cheap cotton and make a really cute version of this. It also has like gathers here or something. And then she put piping in this. But obviously, again, you can put whatever you want here. Right? Isn't this just like throw on with just about anything kind of top? There's a dress version. Here's another lightweight top version. Very, very wide neckline on this, and it's even kind of falling off her shoulder a little bit. So maybe like too wide on the neckline, but on this one, it's not wide at all. So I don't know what's happening there. Cute. Is that it for, no, there's some more pictures. I like to see them on her, but then also the testers too. Like, I think it's cool to see them on so many, on her, like how, she, how the designer wants them to look and then how it was actually executed on the testers. I love that. Yeah, these are really cute. Oh, here's one of the back here. I'll get that in a second. So this is pre-made piping, I think, right? Or maybe she made it herself, but it's really pretty. And then this little gauze, so nice. And then there's the back. Yeah, I don't know why it's falling off her shoulders in some, but not the others. So again, when you go to Tissue Fit, just double check that. 
super cute. Okay, love that one. Now we have the sweatshirt pattern. Okay, yeah, this really is going to be the sweatshirt. Lots and lots of hem band options. Um, easy to sew pattern with stylish details and many variations for creative fun. Turtleneck collar, round neck, Peter Pan collar, with or without a pocket, zippered cardigan version, with or without a hood. So many options. Look at this. So we have, she said, turtleneck collar, Peter Pan collar. Uh, we also have um, hooded version, Peter Pan collar again, hooded version again, zip front, with or without a pocket somewhere. There's just a ton of options. <gasps> Stop the pocket. This is the pocket. This is the pocket. That's cool. See, that's the pocket. Love. That is so cool. So unique, so different. One of those things, again, that people are going to be like, wait, what? Where'd you get your top? That's so cool. And you'll be able to say, I made it. <laughs> um, there's like a quilted knit version. Stop. Even that version is a little bow is a pocket. No. That is really cute. I'm not entirely sure about the contrast. Again, I don't really love drawing attention to my hips like that, but all in one color would be really fun. Like this, like this, right? That's cute. It's like a bow hemp, come on. So fun. She's trying to find some different types of photos. So that's not lined. No, not lined. It does have a little facing. Hem facing and zipper facing. So that, you know, really well constructed. A lot of people made these bow versions. Are there more? Yes. Ooh, cable knit. So nice. Love it. I even love it as a zipper front. That would be so fun to throw on. Can you do the zipper front with the bow thing though? I don't think so. Yeah, you can't, could not do that. I mean, you could, but that's not how it was designed. So cute. I love this. I love this. This is so fun. Okay. We're about halfway there, guys. <laughs> um, all right, we've got Le Jog, which I imagine is like a jogger pattern. Um, so this might be a little bit more forgiving in the pants department because they are intended to be a little bit, you know, made from knits and the knits is going to be a little bit more forgiving. But we've got elastic casing, scoop uh, pocket, and elastic at the hem too. So yeah, because this is so relaxed, because it's made from a knit, all of this looks a lot better. It's not like the most groundbreaking jogger pattern I've ever seen. You know, in fact, this, the idea that only this is elastic, that's a little interesting. This whole thing should be elastic, no? She made shorts. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know if I would categorize this as like the best jogger pattern that's out there. In fact, uh, the Sew Together pattern for this month is from Petite Stitchery and they have a free jogger pattern. So I don't know. It's hard for me to pay for one that looks as good or even worse than the free one. You know what I mean? Betty Boop dress. I love bows. I love ruffles. Ultra feminine dress with a nice neckline in the back, skater skirt, and small ruffles on the shoulders. New version from 2021. There's a top version and a crop top available with or without a sleeve, with or without ruffles, high waist version for the dress and top, all reworked sewing booklet with explanatory drawings for all these options. And then an annex with explanations for lining the dress completely. Wow. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So she did a drop waist 
but you also have a high waist option available as well. Girl loves a piping. Can't blame her. It is really cute. Let's see the top. Oh, and this with the sleeve. That's cute. Cute. <laughs> Um, is this the high waist version? Is this a wedding dress? Stop. Pretty with the little overlay. This is the high waist option. It's not high waist. It just sits at your natural waist. Yeah, lots of really cute options. Let's see this top version. Yeah, and I imagine this is one of those things too that you could make in knit or wovens and have a lot of fun with it. Is this Whitney? It is Tomcat Stitchery, if you don't know her. So, I, Whitney, I know you watch some of these videos. Um, and anybody, honestly, who's ever made a Shoot Charlotte pattern, let me know what your experience was like. Since we don't have a body measurement chart, like, did you have issues with fit? Did you have to make a lot of alterations? Let me know. Let everybody know. All right, so that is the Betty Boop. <gasps> oh my gosh, I'm in trouble. Okay, cool Raul. I guess I'll let you say that pattern. I have been looking for this. This is popping up in all of the online boutiques, like Beachy and all those cute girl, like fashion girl boutiques. They're all having a jumper type thing like this. Oh, please look good. Please look good. Please look good. Um, we're all always a pattern for a loose fitting, super comfortable jumpsuit with fitted bust and flare bottom. This year, our cool Raul is getting a makeover. Now, in addition to the jumpsuit, the pattern also includes a top, a short dress, and a maxi dress. Four, one pattern, four possibilities. Okay. Is that, that detail is so adorable. Okay. So this is... The front, this is also the dress. Okay, so you have a seam here that she is accented with, guess what, piping. Um, it is a little bit low, but not, I mean, it is a little bit low. It's adjustable because of the back strap. You can just tie it however you want. But you might consider raising all of this a little bit. Or lowering this, one of the two. Um, here's another version. Cute. Oh, side seam pockets. There's the back again. Here's another close up of the front. Here's a side view. Hard to see because her arms are down, but you can see. That, so this is what happens. This is a good, great, great, great illustration. So because the seams are adjustable, right, her instinct is I'm going to pull this up to a spot that is comfortable on my chest where it's not showing too much cleavage, where it's comfortable underneath my arm. But because she's full or busted, this seam is hitting not in the right spot. This whole, I, if I were her, would have added like a wedge all through here to lower this seam so that it sits down here below her bust line. That way when she pulls it up to wherever it's comfortable, um, this this seam sits in the right place. It's not enough to have an adjustable strap and then just hike it up wherever you want when you have a horizontal seam like this. Does that make sense? Okay, so here is the jumpsuit. I need this. I need this right now. I need this right now. How freaking cute! Oh my gosh. Okay. 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 I'm trying not to get too excited and trying to analyze it for what it is. Blah, blah, blah. Hard to tell. Everything's so loose fitting. I was trying to see the crotch depth because you still have to factor that in. Um, this one looks okay. I mean, it does hang, you know, a little bit low, but I think for this loose fit, it should. Nothing looks like MC Hammer. Let's see it on, oh, shorts version. 
Oh, so cute. So she has hers lower. This is the opposite of the other girl that I was showing you. So she tied hers lower, so more of her cleavage shows because that's what she wanted for herself. And now this line is too low, as is the crotch line. So she needed to shorten this by, I don't know, an inch and a half or so in order to give herself this much cleavage um, and still fit from, you know, here below or the bust line below. Here is, okay, this looks phenomenal. All this fits fantastic. This is a little bit concerning. It should be longer. It should be looser. Like you shouldn't be able to see a difference. You shouldn't be able to tell that there are pants under there, which is what would my concern would be as well if I made it. See how this just all looks kind of like seamless? Let me see if there's another... Nope, there's not another jumpsuit version. So I have made jumpsuits in the past, and I think that all that's happening here is the curve length the from here through, like under her legs, up to the back is too short. Um, so she needed to add a couple of inches probably, and then all of this would fit and not look as much like potential... Um, What's it called when things like front wedgie? <laughs> what is that called? Camel toe? Um, not look as much like that, but I think this fits beautifully. Did she show, did anybody show the back of the jump? Oh yeah, she did. Back of the jumpsuit. Now, obviously she's not very curvy at all. So she's got a lot of extra fabric there, but so stinking cute. I would make it work. I would do go through the trouble to get this to fit, to make it work for sure. All right, now we've got Sunshine. Discover Sunshine, a pattern for light romantic wrap dress with an asymmetrical skirt and pretty petal sleeves. Instructions for both short and long sleeve version. Oh, sorry, both short and long versions, like uh, the length of the dress, the hem. And for single or double petal sleeves, the choice is yours. Okay, so the line drawings only show single petal sleeves, but they do show the two lengths. And then it also looks like the hems are finished with bias binding. So you are going to see that um, when you have a high low, you're going to see the underside of your fabric and then any whatever hem finishes that you use. Love the cheetah. That's a fun, unexpected fabric. Are these lined? You can't really tell. Okay, can you see? She used a, a facing that is very similar uh, in the color of her dress, or at least the underside of her dress, but you will be able to see yours all through here, all through here. You'd be able to see all of that. Yeah, I can't tell if these are lined or just baby hemmed or what's going on, but it is a really pretty sweet little wrap dress. I'm so glad I figured out what the the be quiet, got a secret thing means. I get it now. But can you see the hem here? So again, she did a great job of tying it in. But if you did something that was like not the right color, it would definitely stand out. Here's the double petal sleeve. That's really fun. Even in a contrast fabric. I think that the sleeves are aligned, you guys. I really do. I think they're double. Well, that's a baby hem. And we've also got it um, pinned close here. So not that that's anything wrong with pinning it close. I think that's just an indication of fit um, and how if you are full or busted, then you might have some issues. But you can see hers. Well, you can't see what her waist is doing. Yes, you can. Um, she just got hers pulled really, really tight, which is also why we have all of this, like pooling and gathering and all of that. But she also went ahead and did a baby him too. She said, skip that facing. No, thank you. <laughs> it's pretty sweet, romantic. Okay. So we've got a caftan here, which if you've ever sewn a caftan, you don't really need a pattern for it. 
kind of just like a big gigantic rectangle and then you just make little curves and then you sew a little seam through here and that's it. But if you don't like drafting things on your own, here's a version you can buy. Um, a la playa pattern, which I guess translates to summer for women and girls. Uh, women's pattern includes several versions, short and long dress or top, round neck or v-neck. So, yeah, I think they're mostly intended for beach cover-ups. She did a great job of accessorizing with this little tassel. Again, shocker of the century. She used Liberty Fabrics to um, finish off her bias binding. But it is open, right? It's open, like, a lot, a lot. So you could make it into, like, a regular dress that you wear. But, like, from here down, it's all opened. And did she just, like, take a bunch of people out into the woods and say, we're all going to take photos in the same place? Like, are these all of her IRL friends? Because that's really fun. I think my friends would love it if I did that. If they were, like, photo shoot, yes. And, I mean, of course, the women's and kids' version together is just too cute. Oh, and then there's, like, a tween adorable but yeah caftans are not like look at this for a bridal party everybody gets their own that's so fun um but yeah caftans are not difficult to sew at all like at all at all um you don't necessarily need a pattern for it but if you're someone that likes patterns for sure grab this one this is uh rated at level one that's how easy it is Cute, right? You can do a lot of fun things with caftans in terms of like trimming and all of that kind of stuff. All right, French Kiss is next. French Kiss is an easy to sew pattern with multiple possibilities. A single pattern allows you to sew a top or dress either with sleeves or sleeveless and with your choice of an open or closed back. But more importantly, you're in for a fun sewing experience. Okay. French Kiss is a fun, hassle free pattern that allows you to play with fabrics, colors, and materials. The bow was designed to hide your bra. As long as you pull it down a little in the back. What does that mean? Um, depending on the fabrics used, French Kiss can be light and airy, sexy, stylish and dressy. And then she actually lists off some fabric, um, specific fabrics. It's the first time I've seen that from her. A two-in-one pattern, dress and top versions included, versions with straps or butterfly sleeves. So, baby doll dress, right? With hem facing with empire seam um and this one has a sleeve here is the back it's a little far away to be able to tell straps are cute spaghetti straps there's the top oh the whole back is open on the top literally the only thing keeping this top on is this bow gotcha and then in the dress version, how, is it just, I think the bow is just kind of like tied on in the dress version. It doesn't actually serve a purpose in terms of like closure. Um, you just slip it on over your head. So that's pretty. Here's some more of the tops. I don't know. I know that this was like big, 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 like 10 years ago. Are we still liking tops that show our low backs like that? Here's a great photo of the back of the dress. Really pretty. It's like from the front, not that special. And then you turn around and you're like, oh, that's a really pretty dress. Okay, now we have Combi Pardo pattern. Combi Pardo is a pattern with many variations. Trousers or shorts, long or short sleeves, with or without rustle, ruffles, choose the look you want. I think it's a jumpsuit. Depending on the fabric used, it can be worn during the day, in the evening, or even for a wedding. You could also just sew the top. The pattern is also included. Okay. So it's a romper, jumpsuit, or a top. Okay, got it. 
So little off the shoulder knit, I think. The pants look great. Um, she has her elastic pulled or her like waistband pulled down to her high hip. Um, so there's a lot of billowing here with the top, meaning the top really needs to be lightweight and drapey so that it folds over nicely. Um, I'd be, I pretty much would have to have the elastic casing at my natural waist. If I tried to leave it here, it would just try and ride up and then that would pose problems in the pants. So I'd have to increase the rise of the pants to make sure that the top, that the waistband hit in the right place. But that's just a problem that I have with jumpsuits pretty much anyways. But yeah, it's cute. And she did a good job like making them look like outfits versus just like a jumpsuit. Um, this little elastic neckline can be off the shoulder, on the shoulder, asymmetrical. Lots of options there. Lots of people sitting. Here's a good back view of the short. Yeah, I'm just dying to like for this to be higher. But it's cute on all of them proportion-wise. On me, it would be, like, weird. Oh, and then here's just the top. Well, that's the back of just the top, but you get the idea. Just the top, just the top. Here's a dress version, and then here's a tester version of the jumpsuit. Yeah, I would definitely be adding to the rise and removing from the length of the bodice portion for myself. Hers, okay, she just made the top and tucked it in. Um, but yeah, these proportions here I think are better just about for any jumpsuit. Just where it's sitting at your natural waist. But that might just be me and my own personal preferences. All right, we've got another jumpsuit here. This one is called Combi Bali. It's Combi Jumpsuit. Um, get started making this beautiful jumpsuit. It's a simple hassle-free pattern, but the result is just wow. The double crossover style means no complicated zipper systems and provides an ultra-feminine result in a lovely neckline. The elastic waist provides enhanced comfort and makes it easy to pull on and off. Okay, yeah, so surplus neckline, jumpsuit, ties in the back to keep all this on. Um, and it'll still allow you to get in and out of it really easily. Elastic waist, obviously. I think those are the same photo. A lot of fabric through the crotch here. And do you see how it's, it look, feels like it's pulling tight? Because she has this all pulled down so much. Let's see how other people did with it. Yeah, it's just a low rise. Yeah, so again, she just has it drafted to sit at the high hip, which is fine. If that works for your body type, great. Um, but if you want to add some curves, add to the rise, remove from the bodice. Like hers looks like it's sitting a little bit higher. Let's see here. Yeah, a little bit higher. I love like the sheer like layered look of it. That looks so pretty. Yeah, cute. Cute, cute, cute. This is one of those pattern companies that is actually getting better the lower we go into the collection. Normally, like, their newest patterns are up top, and so over time, the designs get better and better. But this one, I feel like her earlier patterns were better. Is it just me? This is Coupe de Foudre, <laughs> strapless dress with elastic above the bust and pretty front bow. Easy to sew pattern for many variations, a light flowy everyday dress, elegant feminine cocktail dress, a dress to wear for a wedding paired with a wrap. You can also lengthen the pattern to make a strapless maxi with or without the bow or shorten it to make a top. Also perfect for pregnant women or breastfeeding moms. Also, I'd like to add to all of that, that you can add a strap. 
there's no reason why you can't add a strap to this. So if the strapless, which I don't love strapless, like if my body looked like this when I wore strapless, I would probably wear it too, but it doesn't. Um, and it's not comfortable and I just end up tugging on it. But I do think this is a really cute dress that's got to be like level one easy. Yeah, level one easy for sure. Um, so really cute. Again, feel free to add straps. No big deal. Look how cool that is. That is this? Okay. Got to know how she did that. I mean, right, for a wedding. She's exactly right. That looks, she looks perfectly in place in her strapless dress that yesterday she wore to the beach. So fun. This one is the one that's lengthened to the maxi. And she also added a belt or a waist seam or something. I think that this is so fun. So fun, cute, endless possibilities. And I kind of hate that I have to buy the pattern in order to figure out how she did the bow. I think that it's just sewn into the side seams and then tied in some kind of miracle way that makes it look so chic. But there is definitely something happening here. I don't know. But is it worth spending the money to figure out how she did it? Probably. <laughs> Probably. I also wonder if for this one, she ended up tacking it down to make sure it stayed in this place. So cool. I love that one. A bathing suit. We're going to skip bathing suits. I just don't know how to really review bathing suits. I mean, it looks really cute. Looks like it fits good to me, but I don't really know what I'm looking for in swimsuits. This one is the lipstick pattern. Uh, lipstick is an easy and quick to sew pattern. Perfect for sunny days and festive evenings. Two-in-one dress or top version. And it just has like this cool like pleated or ruffled neckline. Big thick strap. And then I think the belt is completely separate so you can tie it on wherever you want. Yeah, that's cute. But it looks like that other ruffly neck one. Can't we just. Right. Isn't. But it, that other one had didn't have straps. It had sleeves or something. I think we could probably make it work out of one or the other. Yeah. Remember whenever I was talking about how it was a little bit odd that she sewed it with bias tape. When you should be able to just sew it wrong sides together and then flip it to the right side and top stitch. And this is Working Girl. The names are really cute. Um, Try your hand at this pretty shirt that's elegant yet very sewable. No collar or darts, but features a nice button placket edged with piping and pretty ruffles on the front. Okay. Oh, yeah, the piping is really pretty. She gave a lot more room through the bust here and still has a little itty bitty sleeve cap. Yeah, that is cute. I could see myself wearing that. You could even lengthen this into a dress easily and, um, you know, have like a cute little shift dress. Cute. There's really only the one version, though, so no need to look at the rest of these photos. Um, and then we have the rendezvous pattern. Another. She loves bows, so this girl and I, between the bows and the ruffles, we are like kindred spirits. With the rendezvous pattern, you can easily create a super feminine blouse to wear to all your appointments. <laughs> A business meeting, a romantic dinner, a classy cocktail party, or for tea and gourmet treats with your grandmother. Depending on the fabric you choose, you can turn your rendezvous into a dressy blouse, a little top perfect for day wear, or even stylish and comfortable sweatshirt. Raglan sleeves can be made in two lengths, three quarter or long. A tasseled blouse variation is also included. You'll find all the instructions on the last page, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we really do have two tops here, right? And we've got the bow one and we've got the tassel one. Um, 
so lots to take in, but it's basically a yoke that sits above the bust. Some of you are going to be like, yeah, that's never going to work for me. Um, but it is quite cute and certainly different. Again, we've got this super wide neckline, like you can't even wear a bra. Um, let's see. Here's another one. Yeah. Super wide neckline. Here's the tassel blouse. Oh, and it like, gathers up. Well, that's cute. And then the tassel blouse again. Hmm. I'm a little on the fence about this one. I think I want to like it, but I think that this could be unflattering. The sweatshirt has my mind going too, making this into a little sweatshirt, but maybe like altering the neckline so it's more of a crew. I don't know. Or maybe if this were like shorter, so it, uh, what am I trying to say? If this were shorter so that it forced the fabric up higher into like a tighter bow in the middle, that would help with this. I'm not sure. That would be something that I would have to like play around with. But I do love how you get the tassel version too. It's like two totally completely different tops just all in one. Okay, this is the Safari top. Um, super easy pattern. Sew up in no time. No set in sleeves. No zippers. No buttonholes. Perfect for a beginner. Lightweight fabrics. And then a loose fit and belt that can be tied in front or back which means I think that the belt is sewn into the side seams. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, it's just a grown-on sleeve top. Here's the dress version. Oh, yeah, they are. They are sewn into the side seams. Okay, that's cool. I like that. But, you know, very, very, very basic. So if you're just getting into sewing garments this is perfect for you and you're going to love this. It's going to fit well. <laughs> like it's going to be awesome. Um, but for those of us that have been sewing for a minute, we could probably draft this on our own, but it is cute. And it is a good reminder that like even the basics can look really exceptional and that sometimes we don't need to sew the most complicated pattern there is in order to have a garment that we love. Right. Okay, this is combi shoot. So I'm convinced now that combi means jumpsuit. <laughs> Romper with buttons, front bodice, pretty back neckline, and faux bow in the back. Again, with the bow, she gets me every time. The waist is elasticized, making it more comfy and easier to get on and off. Okay, button front. Like, uh tank top style bodice. It does look like the elastic might go a little higher or the waistband might be a little bit higher. Oh, I see. It's gathered into this little bow thing and then open in the back. That's cute. Hands in the pockets. We need to make a song. Okay. Here's one without her hands in the pockets. Fits really well. This is really cute. Here's the back. Okay, closer up version of the back. Right? That's really sweet. Even as like a swim cover up or whatever, I think it's really, really cute. Um, again, she doesn't say if it's knit or woven, but I'm assuming it's knit. I'm assuming it's knit, but we don't get any of that information on her site. Okay, so now we've got Dolce Vita. Two in one pattern with a multitude of variations, a little top with shoulder ties that's comfortable and easy to wear featuring feminine touches such as gathers and bows, a long skirt that's boho style yet elegant with piping trimmed waistband, side seam pockets and a slit revealing just the right amount of leg. Well, yeah, this is like the perfect little outfit. So you've got your top that is adjustable with the straps because there's no horizontal seam here. So if you like it lower, you can let the straps out. If you like it higher, you can pull them up. You just have to, you're working within the constraints of your underarm here, how much of this you want to show also. And then here's your little elastic 
Well, is it elastic? I don't know. Elastic skirt, piping trimmed, it doesn't say. Um, and then there's the slit. Here's the back. Yeah, I mean, not bad for a skirt and a top. Yeah, it's got elastic, but I think only in the back. And then the skirt has beautiful gathers. I would love to see it. Did she do this and I just missed it? No. If this fabric and this fabric were the same, and then the contrast of both were also the same. That could be pretty, right? Did anybody do that? No. Um, but I mean... You could do a whole bunch of options with this. I just really want to pull everybody's skirts up to their waist. Cute. Fun. I think this is not the same top, though. Maybe she added the top to this pattern later because all these people are wearing different tops. So that's a little bit confusing. But this is what you're buying. This and this. So cute, right? I do love how she pulled the white from the contrast and also the like burnt red too. It's pretty, very pretty. Love it. Okay. Last little bit here. We've got the Fuji pattern and this will carry you through every season with comfort and elegance, depending on the version and fabric chosen. You can make a light topper dress for summer, a mid-season blouse, or a nice sweater for winter. Three sleeve lengths, two neckline options, lots of pretty details like an outside facing with a pretty neckline, shoulder seam panels, etc. So you can get creative playing with fabrics, colors, and materials. Loose fitting, comfortable cut, aka easy to fit. Okay, so we've got these shoulder panels, you've got this facing, but then just a simple grown on sleeve and a little baby curved hem. Then you can lengthen the sleeves, lengthen the skirt, again, not set in in any way, but then you've got this like tunic type of neckline as well. So this is the tunic-y version. Here it is in her favorite type of contrast. That's cute. I like the contrast. I actually, I don't love contrast usually, but I do like it in this regard when it's this thing plus that plus the this here. That's fun. Yeah, here's a good picture of it. Right? Super cute, like sweatshirt vibe. Here it is in a denim. Nope, but it could be a really cute denim, especially... If you guys been watching American Idol, Katy Perry has been wearing this denim dress where it's like all kinds of different shades of denim. That's what this reminded me of. Because you could do this out of like a dark denim, then this out of a medium colored denim, and then this out of light uh, wash denim. And it could be really fun. And then this is it all in one. Yeah, I love the idea of it in a sweatshirting for sure. Denim also. What is this? Oh, that's the same same blouse as the other one. Yeah, that's cute. It does seem to be pulling to the back a little bit, though. I don't know what that's about. Are they all doing that? Yeah. Hmm. But it's still cute. And I think that was like a level one. And then we have another bathing suit here. Also very cute. If you're into looking for bathing suits, go check this one out. But that is the end of Shoot Charlotte's Collection. A lot of really good standout stuff, especially toward the end, um, which is kind of surprising. There are some ones that I'm definitely going to be buying. This is one of them. Um, and I'm eager to try them out and see, I loved this top too, and see how I get on sewing them. Um, but if it goes well, I can imagine making a lot of these because like I said, she does such a good job of sort of like thinking outside the box with fabrication. And I do have a lot of fabrics in my stash that are sheer or lightweight or <coughs> at the very least, like, I mean, some of them are straight up see-through. Um, so I think that I could find a really cool creative way to <coughs> use those fabrics with these patterns. 
Um, very, very inspiring in that regard. Um, I also love how almost all of her patterns are like, you can make a day version, you can make a night version, you could wear it, you know, shopping or to a wedding. I just love that. Um, oh, I like this one a lot too especially lengthened into a bodysuit. Um, anyways, let me know what you guys thought. Like I said, if you've made these patterns before, please leave a comment letting us know what kind of what your experience was like. If you had any fit issues, any of that kind of stuff, it really, really helps us all out so much. Um, otherwise, if you haven't made them before, let me know if you like any of them. Oh, the sweatshirt. I have to get the sweatshirt pattern. Um, if you liked any of them, uh, which ones are you going to be buying? Let me know in the comment section below. But other than that, otherwise, that's going to do it for me today. I will see you all very soon. Bye.